Hello. A big round of applause for Steve here today. I like to say that Steve's the hardest working man in the web development community. Hold on, let me hit the button over here. Fantastic. Uh, I also have to say that uh, I'm very happy that all of you are a captive audience in this room today. Uh, normally when I give talks, they give you fair warning, so you can kind of opt out. So I'm glad everyone's staying in place. Um, one of the things that we talk about in web performance that we've been trying to move off of for a while now is the concept that all of your performance revolves around your network load time. This has pretty much been the currency that we've been trading amongst each other for years now. We've had static websites, we've had CDNs, we've had all these infrastructures that have changed, all to just get us loading under three seconds. However, what we've been neglecting in this new age of web applications are the other two pillars of web performance. We're not just talking about network anymore. We're also talking about your rendering time, how your page is being laid out, how your GPU is handling the rendering of your pixels on your screen. And also for really intensive applications, you have to worry about your compute performance as well. Right? What is your JavaScript doing under the hood? Are you actually optimizing your array accesses? How many garbage collection events are actually eating away at your layout time on your page? These two other pillars of web performance are often neglected by the average amount of web developers. And today, I want to talk a little bit more about digging into the compute section of that. Now, with Chrome DevTools, we try to take a very um, responsive reaction to the way that developers and programmers get things done. As anyone in here can know, the only way to use tooling to find performance problems is with three simple steps, right? First off, you have to gather information. That's it. If you don't have information, you can't do anything else. So every tool you use needs to be able to give you as much information as fast as possible. Number two, you need insight from that information because a spreadsheet of floating point numbers does nothing to convince your manager that you should spend time on a problem. And then finally, once you have that insight, you should have enough information there to actually take action. And this is the whole thing that we're trying to get to with Chrome DevTools, allowing you to execute on these three steps as fast as possible and iterate, 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 iterate. Any time that you have on one of these steps that's longer than the rest of them just completely blows your time away. So what I want to talk about today, and please don't take any pictures of me while I'm hunched over uh, Noterback style on, on the thing here, is uh, just kind of walk you through Chrome DevTools and, and take a look at what we can do to find some of your memory performance problems. Now, a lot of you serving static websites today, you're not really going to get this. You're going to be like, why are we worried about memory? We should just be sending images and static. That's great. But for those of you in here truly pushing the boundaries of the web stack, this is a talk for you. So what we're going to look at here is we've opened up Chrome DevTools, and I've actually gone to the Timeline tab and clicked on Memory. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start recording, very simply, and then just create this button here for this demo that's just going to start creating chunks. Now what you're going to see is uh, three main panes here. The top one is sort of a timeline view that's showing you how many megabytes are actually allocated on your heap right now. Below that is actually events that are occurring, and then final, down on the bottom there is actually sort of a graphical breakdown of where the memory resides in your native heap. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this now. Yes, thank you. Uh, now let's move over here. So you can see that our heap is, of course, changing. Now this particular demo is crafted in a specific way that we're forcing garbage collection events to occur. So what you can actually see is we've got about you know, 22 megs. A garbage collect event occurs, and we drop down. And we can see this correspond on the timelines down here as well. Boom. You can actually see three garbage collection events had occurred in that small little time window. Now. For those of you writing web games or other web applications, like even Gmail has this problem 90% of the time. Much love to my Gmail props. Um, the thing that I look at here is this 3.849 milliseconds. That's how long the garbage collection event took. Now, I know it's heresy on the web development platform to claim that garbage collection may be bad. I get that. You guys usually come at me with pitchforks like I killed Grumpy Cat. That's cool. Um, but what you need to know is that garbage collection isn't in itself bad. It's how frequently garbage collection runs. That's the bad thing. And guess what? As a programmer, it's your job to control how often this garbage collection event eats away your frame time. It takes time away from the smooth scrolling of your site, and users notice it. So we can see that even just clicking record here, creating some objects, we were very easily able to see how our memory heap and the garbage collection system is reacting to the way our page is moving. 
Now, if you want to dig in a lot deeper, we've got a great profiles tab. And so this is going to be a different demonstration. On the profiles tab, we have record heap allocations. Now, I'm going to warn you, there be dragons here. So make sure that uh, if you're get, digging deep into the code like this, uh, you're really looking for problems and are willing to make the changes that these type of tools will tell you about. So I'm going to just go ahead and hit start. And what this is going to be doing is this is actually showing us the blue vertical lines on top there are allocations that are actually occurring. And the gray lines that you see behind it are where objects have been freed due to a garbage collection event. So now I'm just going to hit this button. And you can see that we'll jump from about 5K up to about 100K. And we can get these spikes. And as I start spamming this object, you can start to see the blue lines and the gray lines come together pretty well. So I'm going to hit Stop here. So again, what you're looking at at the top is you're seeing a bunch of these gray lines is where the memory that I've allocated has actually been freed by the garbage collection object. And this final blue line actually represents objects that are still resident in my heap. So it's things we need to worry about cleaning up. Now, this second little pane right here that I can highlight is actually a representation of what's in the heap at that time. So let me try to move this down here. And so we can sort of scale our window so you can see what's going on. And we can see that there's actually about a 320k object, or 320k of um, memory is actually going to the item type. And so we can expand this and start scrolling down and see that, yes, there is, in fact, an X object, or an object name X. And there just seems to be hundreds of these things that have been allocated, which makes sense because if you actually go look at the source code here, you can actually see that the function item x actually allocates a property on an object with x that's actually given a very large array of data. So you can see this code here um, and, and what it's doing. Now, I've only got about 30 seconds left, um, but I want you all to check out uh, this link. And I, I want to leave it on the screen for 30 seconds so that everyone has a time to embed it into your memory. This is actually a short link for Chrome Developer Tools. Uh, it's actually a, a great web page up maintained by Paul Irish and Adi Osmani. Hopefully, you all know who they are. Uh, these guys are geniuses with Chrome DevTools. And if you go to this site, it's going to be basically like 15 pages of how to get deep, deep, deep into memory profiling and find your problems. Listen, I'm of the opinion that any new web applications are going to fall in the realm of the programmer managing their memory properly to get the fastest performance po possible. Or I can just mess up the final keyword of my talk. Hey, thanks for your time today, guys. Bye.